Blah, blah, blah. Hi guys, this is Charles. I'm one of the surgeons at South Paws. Um, today we are removing a mast cell tumor on the dorsal midline of a basset hound. Um, the mass, you can see on the CT scan uh, right there. Stop, go back. So you can see the mass on the CT scan and it seems to be floating um, pretty nicely, not adherent to the underlying fascia. Um, we CT'd the lung, I'm sorry, the liver and the spleen and there wasn't any evidence of secondary spread. Um, and so the plan is just to do a wide local excision um, and primary closure. So if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and make sure that you turn on notifications uh, so that you'll get a ding when we're live streaming something. So. Nice thing about this area, particularly in a basset hound, is that we have a lot of extra skin here, which means we should not have any um, issue with primary closure. This is almost identical to the area that you would take a deep circumflex iliac dorsal branch flat from. So that means that we do have lots of extra skin here left over. So first thing we're gonna do is mark the skin where the um, tumor is, and then we'll measure three centimeters out from that um, as our skin margin. If you have any questions, we do have the live stream running and, uh, or sorry, the live chat running. And so we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. I think you probably overestimated a little bit on that. So I think you only need to go about two centimeters outside of that. And, and make it elliptical. We have a hello and somebody saying grabs popcorn. <laughs> and if we don't have enough skin to close here, or if it's under a bit of tension, we can always do Z-plasties if we need to later on. So, but this should be fine. Alrighty, so we'll start on our skin incision. And we are gonna take lumbar fascia deep to the tumor um, as a deep margin. That's probably not necessary given its appearance on the CT scan. The other thing that's important to notice about this mass is that it is a sub-Q mast cell tumor as opposed to a skin mast cell tumor. And those in general behave um, a little bit more nicely than skin mast cell tumors by and large. Uh, so a question about what's our favorite type of suture. We use PDS. Um, PDS is the longest lasting absorbable suture that we have or that exists. Um, and so that's the one that we tend to use in most situations unless we're doing like just an intradermal closure in a patient that doesn't have any issues with wound healing, we'll use monocin, um, which lasts a shorter period of time. Uh, it's a good question about um, C-Kit. Um, I, I would um, check C-Kit in a dog that had a grade three tumor, especially if the owners were uh, concerned about or considering chemotherapy. We don't use it as a matter of, of course in every case, although that's probably not a bad idea. We should think about doing that more often. Kath, do you know if it's easy for us to get C-Kit? Yeah, I think they normally do it on the 
history. Yeah. And she'd have to do a pre-op biopsy. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So I was just asking Kath how hard it is to get C kit done, and she says that we can get it on as a a post histopath test that we can request from the pathologist. So. Yeah. And then we're just going to dive straight down onto the fascia from here. So we're going basically vertically straight onto the fascia. And that's the fascia down there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And we've just cut through it right there. And we'll continue that incision with mets and bones to midline and then we'll have to jump over to the other side. fascia right there. So we're just <coughs> cutting the antibrachial fascia, I mean, sorry, the lumbar fascia off the dorsal spinous processes on midline. Greasy little dog. That's deep circumflex iliac dorsal branch right there. And on this side, we're just diving right down onto the fascia through the fat, of which there's plenty. Okay, so we've excised the mass. We've got plenty of fascia all around underneath the tumor. So this is going to be <clears throat> certainly a clean margin. We will send it off anyway. Uh, there's a question, why don't we really measure uh, the margins? Um, 
And it is, I mean, it comes from experience knowing what two centimeters looks like. And two centimeters or three centimeters or whatever is kind of an empirical guess anyway. And so, um, again, just through experience, if I didn't have the experience, I would recommend actually measuring it with a ruler. But again, just remembering that it, it basically when you take a margin that's two centimeters or three centimeters or whatever, it is just a guess as to how far the tumor cells exist from the visible tumor. Uh, do you concern chemotherapy and high grade regardless of the completeness of margin. So um, generally we would, with high grade mast cell tumors, we're gonna recommend chemotherapy regardless of the, um, the completeness of margins because chemotherapy is not gonna help us with local recurrence. It's only gonna help us with systemic metastasis to my knowledge. And Robson, it's nice to see you watching. I don't think that I've seen you on a live stream before. That's nice to see you. Welcome. I'm not sure if that's going to stretch that far or not. I just got a new book on Kindle called Into the Magic Shop, which is a neurosurgeon talking about mindfulness in, in neurosurgery and how it's helped him with his clinical outcomes and that kind of thing. I'm only about 20% of the way through, but it's interesting so far. Can we get another OPDS, please? Uh, yes, please. Just grab. Robson is a surgical oncologist from Brazil. Do you used to work together? No, I just know him from Facebook. Is that going to come together? Is the question. And we'll just do a, um, a skin inje uh, injection of the mepivacaine because the skin is really the only layer that's going to be painful here.
And because there's no discharge here or anything, I'm not going to do a drain. Um, you guys that watch us often would know that I don't like drains unless we really need it. In terms of the dead space for a seroma formation, Charles, would you consider rather than doing draining, just tacking it down? That's a possibility. Yeah, just with the skin under tension, it's going to be hard to tack down. And we might get a seroma here, but that's not catastrophic either. I'd rather get a seroma than an infected seroma by putting a drain in. The drain's not going to stay in that long anyway, so. Uh, there is a bit of tension. I think we I think we might do a Z-plasty up here cranially. That's the skin that's under tension. Back here, it's quite loose. And I love the Z-plasty. All right, so can we get some more um, OPDS? Do you want to put a interrupted there? And I'll draw out the Z here. So the biggest line of tension is right in here. So that's where we're going to want our vertical part of the Z. And we'll just come on either side like that. And... Uh, Get a rough measurement here. About the length of the syringe. When you're doing your Z-plasty, you have to make sure that you totally release these ears so that the skin is mobile. And then bring them across like this. Can we get some 2 OPDS, please? And that's under much less tension now.
Uh, externals or intradermal, whatever you like. He's a basset, or she's a basset hound, and she's about five, I think. Now let's measure that length here. So we picked up about a two centimeters, something like that. Am I in your way, Kath? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that should be okay. I'm about to do a hemivertebrae on a little pug puppy, but I'm not going to live stream it because it's pretty intense surgery and I've got fluoro in there and stuff. And so I thought that the fluoro would get in the way of the camera and I need to really concentrate on what I'm doing. So I will let you guys know what we or how we go. Ah, uh, you can let that go, that's right. Or just, yeah, pull in that direction, that's great, thanks.
funny jokes, Charles? Not that are appropriate for live streaming. <laughs> Kath have a joke. <laughs> you know, my mind is racing now, Ken. I know, trying to think of an I have so many inappropriate jokes. We suggest that anything that ever says maybe it can be recorded and not live streamed and do some editing before uploading once. <laughs> um, the problem with rec with live stream or with recording it is that the fluoro is going to be in the way of the camera. That's one of the main reasons why I'm not doing it. So the fluoro head is right in the way of where the camera would normally be. I'll think about it, but I probably will not record it. This live stream is crazy after Yeah. I don't think you will, though. What makes you think that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Italy. Usually, do you remove regional link nodes? Um, so, good question. Um, if I have a higher grade tumor or I'm concerned about metastasis and it occurs, so the question was, by the way, in case you can't see the, the chat, is do we remove regional lymph nodes? And the answer to that is if I have a high grade tumor or one that I'm concerned about metastasis, I will aspirate the lymph nodes first and then if they are questionable or if they're positive, we'll go ahead and remove them. Remembering there's a saying that Lymph node metastasis is a speedometer of metastasis, not an engine. So what that means is that it's not entirely clear that removal of affected lymph nodes does anything more than just confirm the diagnosis. It's not clear that it slows down the progression of, um, of disease. And I know that they do it a lot in human medicine, and I guess they have evidence to support that. But um, it's not clear, at least in animals, that that provides any survival benefit. So another question was from the popcorn man, whether or not you can take a photo of the mandibulectomy from yesterday with your own commission and post it so that they can see how he's doing. Uh, yep, we can do that. Jason? Pretty good stitch-up job on that mandibulectomy. Yeah. On the mandibulectomy. <laughs> I hope so. All right. So that is pretty much it. We can see that Z-plasty, good demonstration of uh, tension reduction using that procedure. And let's get that syringe again. Lay it on there. And we can see that we've gotten actually about three centimeters of, um, of extra skin there. So really, really helpful. I love the Z-plasty. I use it all the time. It doesn't require any real planning beforehand other than just making sure that you have um, prepped and draped enough skin. So I um, highly recommend that as, a, um, as an option. So anyway, um, yes, we will try to get a picture of the mandibulectomy. Um, a question about the lymph nodes we've already answered. 
uh, hemivertebrate. I don't think I'm going to record it, but think about it. Um, there is a basset hound that is how old? Five years old, I thought. Um, we've already discussed the chemotherapy, so that's pretty much it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I'll see if I can live some, some, something later on today, and um, hope to see you soon.